Hi, this is Natalie Rydstrom from SBR Picks. Manchester United are constantly in the headlines, and as a result, bookies are listing special markets to keep your bets in with the action. Here with me now to break down the bets and help us to choose what's worth looking at is William Hill's in-play radio host, Lee Phelps. Lee, welcome to the show. Hi, Natalie. You well? Yep, good, thank you. Now, yeah. one of the main storylines uh, surrounding Manchester United obviously is Ronaldo's desire to join their squad. Is this hearsay or is there some truth in it? I think there's been that much uh, paper talk over the last you know year or so that I think there must be some truth in it. I, I think whenever Cristiano Ronaldo is asked about Manchester United, he, he speaks about the club in glowing terms. So I don't think he's closing any doors. You know, I, I suppose that someone of his calibre you want a new challenge, don't you? You want to be able to do something else. Now, he's won the Champions League with Real Madrid, of course. Now, La Decima, they, they, they completed that magnificent feat eventually. Um, I guess he'll want to wrestle back the league title this year from Atletico. But you've got to think about you know, the players that are coming into that squad. Gareth Bale, maybe a little bit of a threat to his kind of supremacy as the, uh, as the best player at the club. Um, obviously, you know, James Rodriguez coming in as well. You wonder, is the kind of... He's been held up on a pedestal, Cristiano Ronaldo. Are there other people kind of getting up to his level? And maybe that's the point when he'll start to think, I maybe need a new challenge here. And why not go back to a club where he felt at home, where he's absolutely loved? I mm -hmm. think he really enjoyed English football. I think it made him the player he is today. Mm -hmm. Remember when he started out in the Premier League, it was step over, step over, step over, fall over, you know, cry a little bit and then get on with it. Uh, whereas he kind of eradicated that largely from his game and became a powerhouse um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does come back. I'm not sure it'll be too soon, though. Um, the injury situation is an interesting one. I had a, I was out in Brazil for the World Cup, and I had a few rumours that you know his injuries were worse than people uh, at first thought about. Um, we'll see this season if he plays less games than he's played before. Then I think that'll be a clear indication that maybe uh, Real Madrid will look to offload him. Um, and why not go to back to Manchester United? They're, they seem to be assembling a, a squad or trying to assemble a squad of Galacticos themselves. Yeah. So uh, seems like a why, why go anywhere else? Why not go back to somewhere where you loved? Well, Ronaldo's next team odds have Manchester United as the considerable favourite, priced at 1.73, uh, followed interestingly by Sporting Lisbon, uh, priced at 4. How likely is it that he will move and what time frame are we looking at? And uh, would you care to make a stab at uh, how much he'd cost? <laughs> uh, um, God, how much would it cost? I mean, I suppose it depends on his fitness levels. You know, it, you know if, if the injury rumours are true, then his, his cost would diminish greatly, wouldn't it? You know, it depends on his contract length and lots of other things. I don't think he'll move th this season. I don't think he'll move to at least next summer. And I think a lot of it depends on what Real Madrid do. You know, uh, th there are goals still at Real Madrid, obviously. Um, no team has ever retained the Champions League. What a feat. You know, that would stand him alone, you know, as a player with Real Madrid to have retained the Champions League would be a, an amazing feat. Um, obviously, you know, like I said before, winning La Liga back, you know, that, that would be, you know, great for him as well. So I don't see him moving before next summer. I wouldn't see him moving in the January transfer window or anything like that. But, you know, I, you know, if he's in contract and he's fit and he's playing as well as he has been, well, you would have to break the transfer record to bring him into English football. You know, no, no doubt. Obviously, you could pretty much name your price, couldn't you? If the Maria, the Maria cost as much as he did, yeah. Ronaldo must be at least another twenty million pounds yeah. on top of that on the current market. I mean, <laughs> you've got to think about financial fair play, though, as well, Natalie. I mean, can could Manchester United actually afford to have him in their squad? I mean, they've got a squad that's already. I think it's you know the squad itself is worth about three hundred and seventy million. You know, can they actually afford to have another player on such high wages in their squad? I'm not so sure. You, you know, you, you think about some of the kind of the deals that they've already got. The likes of you know someone like um, someone like Wayne Rooney, you know, has allegedly got a clause in his contract where he must be the highest paid player at Manchester United. So if if Cristiano Ronaldo came in on a massive wage, then Rooney's wage would have to match that. And you know, I'm sure Falcao's on a huge wage, and you know, and De Maria and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not quite as simple as all that. I mean, the sport in Lisbon one's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, as a player. You know, eases down in his career. Would he just want to go home? 
would he want to just go home and play back in Portugal again and play for you know the club where he, he grew up? I mean, you know, it's not that outlandish an idea, is it? Um, and I think somewhere like Sporting Lisbon would even take him on if he was injured. You know, it'd be a place where he could kind of you know he could he could play you know a bit part if you like a cameo role, still being fantastic. But uh, I'm not saying Cristiano Ronaldo's career is over, by the way. I just think maybe you know maybe the, on the prices, maybe you would look at that more likely happening um, than going to Manchester United because it's quite short a price, isn't it? Yep, it is a short price there, 1.73. Now, a player that has already made the move uh, is uh, Falcao. He's on a five-year loan, and he already holds the odds for the shortest odds above Rooney to be their go uh, top goal scorer. Price 2.75. Rooney's priced uh, just slightly higher. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think. I, well, I, I think Falcao will score more goals. You know, I, I don't see why he won't play most games. No Europe to distract them. Um, I think he'll play. You know, in every game that they need him to play. Why would you bring a player of his quality in? It's not like they brought him in at the end of his career. He's the same age as Wayne Rooney, 28 years old, still at the peak of his powers. You look at his scoring record. He scores over 25 goals a season, season in, season out. He scores goals in whichever league he plays in. Um, scored nine in 17 last season, which on the face of it looks like a poor return. He was injured for the majority of the season. He played three games, picked up another niggly injury, sat, sat out for three games, came in and played the last 14 games of the league and season, scored nine goals. Nine goals in 14 games. Brilliant. You know, remember the, before the World Cup, Natalie, everyone was saying, well, you know, Colombia, you know, they're missing their star player. This is one of the greatest plays in the world that won't be at the World Cup. Man United have just signed him on loan. For a season, I mean, it's just it's a staggering signing, mm -hmm. and I think this will be the difference for Manchester United this season. You know, they could they could feasibly play a front three of Falcao, Van Persie, and Wayne Rooney. Wow, the Maria on one side, Matu in the in, the, in the, just behind those three, it, it looks fantastic. Ashley Young on one side. I mean, look, attacking wise, they look unbelievable now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although, you know, although Man United, they have been busy in the latter part of the transfer window with the signings, including sort of Dia Maria and Falcao, they still have the shortest odds not to end up in the top four. And that's priced at 1.67, uh, whilst yes is priced 2.1. And they also have the shortest odds to not qualify for the Champions League group stage next year. That's priced 1.57, whilst yes is priced 2.3. And they're also priced a very low 1.17 to not win any trophies this year. Uh, but where would you see them ending in the league? I'm starting to think they finish fourth, Natalie. <laughs> I think I think this this power they've got up front, I think they will outscore teams. Think about Liverpool last last season. Defensively they weren't great at all. You know, they let in a lot of goals, but they outscored teams, didn't they? And they, they played with this abandon. Now there's no real pressure on Manchester United to win. No one thinks they're going to win the league title. They can go out there and once they get their confidence back up, they can just go out there and attack teams. They can go out there and attack the big four teams. They can go out there and attack the bottom teams. I think once they get going, they will outscore teams dramatically. I think they won't have the, the, the pressure on them that the likes of Arsenal have on them, especially with the Champions League. Obviously, you know, that's a distraction for Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea. I think once they get going, they'll be better than Tottenham. I think they're better than Everton. Already, you know, I think Everton might, might slip dramatically this season from where they finished last time. So I'm starting to really believe that they finish in the top four and do get Champions League football again. The financial figures were released uh, today as we record this, Natalie, and, and it cost them £50 million pounds not being in the Champions League, um, which I guess in the grand scheme of things for a club like Manchester United isn't a colossal amount of money, but it's enough. Yeah. They don't want to do that again because suddenly if you're out of the Champions League twice, in, uh, in two seasons, suddenly your commercial partners start to think, hang on a minute, do, do, should we be involved in this club? And as we know, football is a, a huge business now, especially to Manchester United, into that, that, that market that they're trying to open up and, and exploit in, in the United States. So I think, I think finishing fourth is paramount for Manchester United this season, and I, I think they'll do it. Yep, ending in fourth, uh, I think that is definitely sort of realistic there. Now, uh, Manchester United's new manager, Louis van Gaal, seems to be growing back into popularity, uh, even with his new season results or lack of. He's priced at 1.07 to last longer than David Moyes, which shouldn't be hard. Uh, I personally would probably bet my house on that one. Um, and he has the shortest odds to leave um, in 2017, priced uh, 2.88 or 2018 or beyond, and that's priced 3.75. Now, is Van Gaal in it for the long haul, do you think, or can you see him leaving sooner? Um, I've done about the long haul. In, in March of this year, he said that um, he would retire 
if he didn't get to, to manage a club in the Premier League after leaving the the, the Netherlands job. Um, obviously, he got that wish. He wants to win a um, a title in a, in a fourth different country. Um, I just wonder if he'll do that. You know, once talking about retirement at the age of sixty three as he is now. You, know, you wonder if once he's won the league title, will that be enough for him? You know, will he want to then go and try and win the Champions League with that team? Hard to give up, isn't it? You know, football. It's, it must be a, like a drug almost to, to players and to, to managers. So, look, I, I think they'll finish in the top four this season. I think if they strengthen in January and then strengthen again next summer in the transfer window, because it's obvious they're spending money. It's obvious they want to spend money. I think they could win the Premier League next season. So, if they were to win the Premier League next season, I have a really good go at it. Then what? Then he could he could well retire, having won it, and then go out at the top. He'll be nearly sixty five years old. You know, does he really want to be managing, getting close to seventy years old? I, I'm not sure. I know one knows that obviously, but I'm just surmising from his previous comments that he's already talking about retiring to Portugal with his wife before moving to Man United. So it's obviously in his head. He's mm-hmm. obviously got a plan that he wants to do. So I'd probably go for 2016. Um, whether they win the Premier League or not, if they fail to win the Premier League next season, will he have the drive to go on and try again and again? So I'd probably go for 2016 in that market. Well, when he does leave, Ryan Giggs is the favourite bet to take his place, uh, priced at 2.5, uh, followed by Pep Guardiola, uh, priced at 9, and Mourinho, priced at 11. Now, this is a bit of a crystal ball bet, uh, but who would you go with? Yeah, it is, it is hard, isn't it? Because, you know, who knows who might have come on the scene, you know, by then. I mean, you know, two years ago, would anyone have really been talking about Diego Simeone being in the betting? You know, he's in there now. Um, when you think about um, Giggs, I mean, he's in an ideal position. He's loved, obviously. He's Manchester United through and through. He's second in command. He's already been entrusted with the job once. There was a documentary um, that was made about his time as the, as the caretaker manager here didn't really come across as being a, you know, a really inspirational type of guy. Um, his, you know, his team talks before the going out weren't, you know, weren't amazing. Now, you know, maybe he was just kind of thrust into the headlights a little bit and it was a bit much for him. But um, yeah, he's got time to grow. But at the prices, I'm not sure I'd be taking him right now, Natalie. I mean, you, know, you think about if Manchester United have gone down the road of employing a foreign mar- manager and Louis van Gaal manages to win the title within two years and gets them back into the Champions League, then retires, for instance, well, surely they're probably more likely to go down the road of another foreign manager. Um, and then you've got some huge names. You've just listed them. I mean, you know, would Mourinho be interested by then? You know, Guardiola, obviously, you know, fantastic manager. You know, he, you know his list of clubs so far. I mean, look at it. I mean, he, he only seems to manage at the very best, and Manchester United would fit into that bracket. I mean, it's very tough to predict, obviously, from this this far out. But you know, like you know, like you say, I mean, it's a bit of a crystal ball job. But I'd leave Giggs alone. I'd probably go for one of the, uh, the the kind of Galactico managers, if you like. And I think Guardiola would be the best fit. You know, that kind of overreaching. A management role that he has kind of at Barcelona and now at Bayern Munich, you know, taking the club to another level. So I see that, you know, um, Van Gaal wins the Premier League, they don't do well in the Champions League and suddenly, you know, they get to Guardiola in to take them to the next level in the Champions League and win that trophy again. Mm-hmm. How popular are they, those those really long-term bets, though, you know, because you would have to wait, if, you, if you're saying sort of like 2016, maybe it's 2017, 18 or beyond, you know, you've got to wait a really long time to see a return for your money. It's, it's probably sort of better to stick it in the bank and, uh, you know, wait for the interest. The notoriously difficult manager markets, even when a club's going to appoint a manager the following week, I mean, it only takes a rumour of a story coming out on Sky Sports News for the price to crash through the floor. Lo and behold, you know, people get on it and get excited because it's on Twitter, and the next day it's back up to 10 to 1, and people are like, what? So, you know, trying to predict it this far out is virtually impossible. Who knows? I mean, unless you know you know, then, then it's not worth having a go at. Even when you know, it's probably not worth having a go on because I was told in April time by a respected broadsheet journalist that Louis van Gaal was going to Tottenham. Guaranteed, will happen. <laughs> he didn't, did he? So, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, it's more of a fun talking point, I think, Natalie. That's right. Now, I think we've covered all bets related to Manchester United uh, that are offered right now. Have I missed any? I don't think so. I think we've pretty much covered all of them. Um, th- there's only one, really, that I'd be looking at at the moment, and that's the Farquhar one. Yeah. Being the being the uh, top goal scorer for Manchester United, yeah. Yeah. I like that lot. yeah, I agree with you that one. Leave out. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns, big money free betting contests year round. 
a real-time Vegas-style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.